Hello, my name is Samantha. Welcome to my channel. In the month of October, I am making a new video every Tuesday that is cancer related to support breast cancer awareness. I am a three year stage four breast cancer survivor and in this video I figured I would talk about the permanent side effects of cancer treatment that I still kind of deal with. Some of these are good actually, but most of them are bad, but I really just wanted to bring attention to the fact that cancer stuff doesn't really end with treatment. A lot of the time um, I'm done with active treatment right now, but I still am dealing with a few things. Now, I will say that I have it way better off than some people. I got pretty lucky with the side effects that stuck around for me, but other people have these same side effects but more severe, or other people have other side effects that are just way worse in general. But I just wanted to bring awareness to that, that people don't really forget that they ever had cancer because a lot of people who have had cancer and have gone through treatment still are dealing with things every day that they are like, oh, if I hadn't had treatment, I wouldn't be dealing with this. I ended up having four rounds of AC chemo and nine rounds of Taxol chemo. I was supposed to have 12 rounds of Taxol chemo, but I ended up stopping early because I was getting neuropathy in my fingers and my toes. And that can be a side effect that a lot of cancer patients deal with later on, especially if they get Taxol chemotherapy. It's basically just pain in the fingers and toes. It can spread into the hands and other places, um, it, and sometimes numbness. Basically, it just makes it hard to do like small tasks with your fingers. That was where I would really notice it. Like it would be really hard for me to button up like a jacket or something like that. But some people experience like really, really intense pain. But when I was on Taxol chemotherapy, basically my neuropathy just kept getting worse and worse. And when I went in for my 10th chemo treatment, my oncologist and I made the decision to not get it because he just didn't want me to end up having permanent nerve damage. Um, my neuropathy did end up lasting for, I think about a year and a half after I finished cancer treatment. So even though I was done with chemo and done with Taxol, it still stuck around for that long. But there are many people that have that as a permanent side effect for the rest of their lives. Something that I got from chemo that hasn't gone away yet is sensitivity to light. So it was worse when I was on chemo, but when I would walk outside, my eyes like could not adjust very easily. It would just be painful to walk outside in the sun. And I still notice more of that than I used to before I had cancer. I definitely have to put on sunglasses way more than I used to. I didn't ever really used to wear sunglasses. Um, don't know if that's a symptom of getting older, but that is something that I have noticed and other cancer survivors that I've talked to have noticed that they still do have some light sensitivity issues with their eyes. One side effect I still have from chemo that you probably could guess is I still don't wanna eat certain foods. Obviously when you're on chemo, you feel really nauseous and some people throw up. So basically it's kind of the same thing as if you've ever had like a bad stomach virus and you ate your favorite food and now you don't ever want to eat it again because it just brings up memories of when you were throwing up and feeling sick. That one I don't think is super unique because I think everybody has foods like that where they're like oh I threw that up one time I don't ever want to eat it again. But yeah I definitely have some restaurants that I really liked going to um, before cancer that I cannot go to anymore. This last one from chemo is probably my most annoying side effect that I still have. And this is one that I've told to my doctors before and they're like, you know, I don't hear that one a lot. Um, but I have talked to other cancer survivors about it and they say that they have this. But when I was on Taxol chemotherapy, I started getting hot and cold sensitivity in my fingertips. Now, I just thought this was kind of going along with the neuropathy thing because um, my fingers were kind of painful. So whenever I would hold something really cold, my fingers would hurt a lot. And whenever I would hold something really hot, like I'd have to put it down right away. Um, so I just thought that that had to do with the neuropathy, but I don't really have that pain and neuropathy anymore. But I still have that hot and cold sensitivity. And it's not just in my fingers, it's in my toes, it's in my ears, and it's in my teeth. So if I eat something really cold or eat something really hot, it causes issues in my teeth. My showers are normally fine for the rest of my body, but they are too hot for my fingertips and my toes. So yeah, it was just something that was never an issue before and now I notice it all the time. Like if someone hands me a plate and they're like, oh, careful, it's hot. Like I, I'm like, don't hand it to me because I cannot hold it. <laughs> 
And um, if I'm trying to just hold a cold soda, like carry something in, some groceries in from the car, like by the time I get inside to put them down, my fingers are just aching. So it's not that inconvenient. It's not that big of a deal, but it is something that I do notice every single day. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of annoying. After I finished chemotherapy, I had surgery to remove the cancer that was in my breast. I just had a lumpectomy, but some people get mastectomies. Obviously, if you get a mastectomy, you don't have any breast tissue there anymore. So um, you could be completely flat. You could just not really have a visible breast or um, you could have to be dealing with implants and the pain and stuff from implants because sometimes people have a lot of issues with implants. They can get infected and they have to go back and um, have surgeries again to try to fix their situations with implants. So that is something that a lot of breast cancer survivors in particular deal with, um, managing the side effects of their breast implants. I only had a lumpectomy, but I also had lymph node removal from um, my arm. They removed my level one and level two lymph nodes. Not exactly sure what that means anymore, but that is what happened. From them doing that, it's caused lymphedema in my arm, um, which is basically my arm will swell. This used to be way more of a problem um, when it was closer to my surgery. I had a compression sleeve that I basically had to wear every day and I was dealing with cording that um, went from my armpit like down to my wrist and I had it also down through my chest. Basically lymph nodes help reduce swelling in your body because they're like clearing out your body of toxins and stuff and when you don't have those lymph nodes your arm's gonna swell more. I tend to have more problems with this whenever I'm flying. I always wear my compression sleeve when I'm flying. And when I'm doing like hard exercise, like if I'm going on a big hike or something. The other thing about this arm is it can't really be used for things anymore. So if I'm going in to get my blood drawn, they have to use my right arm, which is really annoying because my veins aren't the best anymore just from all of the blood draws and stuff that I had to do during cancer treatment and before cancer treatment. I did have a port, somebody mentioned that the other day, they are like, didn't you have a port to get chemo? Yeah, I did, but not every nurse knows how to access a port, so I never got chemo, not through my port, but there were other blood draws and stuff that I had to do through my arm, and then there's other things that they, like, don't want to use your port for, so I had to get that all through my arm. And then all of my IVF stuff, and I think this was the big one that really ruined my veins. All of my IVF stuff before chemo started was through my arm because I hadn't had my port in long enough yet. It was still really sensitive and none of those nurses knew how to access it. Basically what I'm saying is they can't use my left arm, which was always the better arm anyway, by the way, to get blood. Now they always have to use my right arm. And same thing with like getting shots and stuff. Um, I don't get them in my left arm because of the whole swelling issue. I don't want my entire arm to just swell up from getting a shot. So basically um, they take my blood pressure from my right arm, they take blood from my right arm and they give me shots in my right arm and they never touch my left. <laughs> Another interesting side effect of surgery, this isn't unique to breast cancer surgery, other People who have had surgery in other parts of their body also talk about this, but I cannot feel certain parts um, in my arm. So like basically under my armpit, um, like I can feel it um, if I push hard and I can tell that there's pressure, but it's like doesn't have the same feeling as the rest of my arm. And it's kind of a hard thing to explain. Um, this was way more intense right after surgery because I remember I used to shave under my arm and I used to just be afraid of doing it because I couldn't feel it very well so I didn't know how hard I was pressing so I was afraid I was going to cut myself. <laughs> I have just gotten better at that now and also some of the feeling has come back but not all of it and I'm three years out from surgery and I still have issues with not being able to feel some parts of my arm. Another interesting thing that comes along with that is you start to feel itchy in that spot, but you can't scratch it because you can't feel it. So it's like not a real itch, it's kind of like in your mind, but it feels like it's super, super itchy and you can't scratch it because you you touching this part in your arm doesn't do anything for you. I don't know how if that makes sense, but that's how it is. <laughs> From my lumpectomy, I've got a lot of scar tissue in my breast and that makes this breast um, a lot more sensitive. Also, um, under my armpit is more sensitive than the other armpit. 
So whenever I have like a breast exam or something and people are feeling around, I can always notice this side of me is way more sensitive than the other side. This is another thing that has gotten better as the years pass, but I'm not sure that it will ever really completely go away. Another thing is just the scars themselves. I have a scar under my arm and I have a scar on my breast where the lumpectomy was. And I also have a scar on my chest from where my port was where I got chemo. The scars don't really bother me that much. The only thing that kind of makes me a little self-conscious is, is if I'm wearing a bathing suit, um, the scar is right, I guess like right here and like my nipple is here. So if I'm wearing a bathing suit, um, usually it just completely covers the scar. But if I like bend over or something, you can start to see some of the scar and that scar is pink. So I'm just kind of afraid sometimes that people are gonna think that they're seeing my nipple, but it's not my nipple, it's just my scar. And like, I'm not gonna just go explain that to people. Probably they're just gonna ignore me and be like, oh, I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see that there. Um, so yeah, that kind of makes me a little self-conscious sometimes. I'm afraid that people are gonna think that they're seeing my nipple and it's gonna make them uncomfortable. Um, I don't really care if they do think that. I just don't want them to have to feel bad about it. <laughs> but if you ever see me in a bathing suit and you see like a little bit of pink, it's my scar, most likely, not my nipple. <laughs> like I said, I only had a lumpectomy, so the scar tissue and stuff is sensitive for me, but probably someone who's had a mastectomy um, would be feeling that tenderness a lot longer than I did. So after my surgery, I had radiation done on my left breast and my lymph nodes, also my rib, but I don't really notice any side effects from that. Radiation can break your bones. So I was having that rib radiated. They told me there's a chance that your rib can break and it probably wouldn't cause you severe, severe problem, but it would probably hurt a little bit. And you might have some like aching in your neck because the rib is kind of like in my neck. I actually don't have any pain from them radiating my rib. Like I said, I'm really lucky with the side effects that I am dealing with. I don't really deal with too many, um, but that is definitely a very common side effect, especially if you are having um, a bone radiated that you can have pain there. Um, some people still have like pain from radiation in their breasts too. That kind of like causes a little bit of nerve issues and stuff. I also don't really have an issue with that. So this next symptom, I'm not actually mad about. Like, I'm fine with it. Um, I'm not sure if it's from surgery or if it's from radiation, but my left armpit does not sweat as much. It sweats a little bit, um, but my right armpit does, like, sweats normally, like how it always did. My left one just doesn't really ever sweat. Always perfectly clean. Nothing ever gets on my shirts from my left armpit. It's always my right side. The other symptom that I have from radiation that I'm not really mad about is that I have hair loss in the areas that were radiated. Now, a lot of people do have issues with this if they have to get brain radiation or something in their head where they don't want their hair to be gone in that spot. I didn't get that. Obviously, it was just my breast and my left armpit and stuff. So um, the hair under my left armpit, it does grow it grows a lot slower than my right armpit. I also sometimes get little hairs around my nipples and it does not grow at all on my left side. Um, it happens on my right. I was never one that had like really thick hair there, so I don't know if someone who has thick hair ends up having it come back, but I had kind of like thin hairs around my nipples and uh, they have never come back since radiation. <laughs> but my armpit hair, that's a lot thicker and that has come back, but like I said, not as much armpit hair on the left side as there is on the right side. After I finished radiation, I did hormone therapy and targeted therapy for two years. And I'm definitely still noticing some problems from that. So when I started hormone therapy, I basically started having a lot of issues with my eyes. Um, they would get really, really puffy and they would get really, really dry. They are not as puffy anymore. Um, people keep telling me how good I look. Um, and they're like, oh, the pregnancy looks so good on you. Like maybe I do look good from being pregnant, but I think that I mainly just look better because my eyes are not as puffy as they used to always be. <laughs> I still have issues with dry eye. 
I use eye drops every single day, but it's not as bad as when I was actively on the treatment, but that is still a side effect that I'm dealing with. That's also a side effect that could be from chemo. When I was on chemo, I had dry eyes too. So that could be from the chemo, that could be from the hormone therapy, targeted therapy, I'm not sure. But that definitely is a side effect that I did not have before cancer treatment that I am dealing with still. And probably the most annoying side effect from a hormone targeted therapy was um, I ended up getting an anal fissure. And I have a video about that where I got a procedure done to try to help with that. And it did help with that, that cleared up, but I'm still now prone to hemorrhoids and other things like that that I didn't really have an issue with before chemo, um, but chemo making me have a lot of diarrhea. Basically it was diarrhea, constipation, diarrhea, constipation, back and forth, back and forth. So like, I didn't know how to treat it. Um, I had that problem with chemo and I had that problem with targeted therapy. And so both of those things kind of caused me to have hemorrhoids and those, I feel like once you get them, they never really ever completely go away. <laughs> um, they can go away for a little while, but then they come back. And I am pregnant, so I recognize that having hemorrhoids is a symptom of being pregnant, but I'm pretty sure that this thing is around to stay, um, that started with my chemotherapy and was made way worse with my hormone therapy and targeted therapy. And uh, yeah, so that's a fun, really fun side effect. <laughs> And that's all I have. I'm sure I forgot some stuff. And I just want to make it clear, I don't want this video to sound like I am complaining about these side effects. Like I said, I am really lucky. It could be so, so much worse. These treatments can cause issues with your heart and issues with your lungs. And I am kind of having asthma now, but I don't know if that's related. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to share my experience and just kind of bring it to everyone's attention that Cancer patients do suffer from long-term side effects after their treatment is even over. And a lot of people have it way worse off than I do. If you are a cancer survivor, leave a comment and let me know which side effects you're still dealing with. And yeah, if you wanna see more of my videos, check them out on my channel. I have cancer-related videos uh, explaining my story with breast cancer. I found it when I was 22. And I also have some pregnancy-related videos because I am pregnant. And yeah, subscribe if you want. Yeah, that's all. Bye.